I'm uh, John Campbell. I'm chairman of the Shrewsbury Historic District Commission, and I'm here with uh, Don Hutchins, Melanie Petrucci, Mindy McKenzie, and uh, Shrewsbury Town historian Michael Perna. And the reason we're doing this show is because our committee is organizing a 150th anniversary commemoration and rededication of the Shrewsbury Civil War Monument located in the very front of the cemetery. This monument is one of the symbols of Shrewsbury, along with the town common itself and the Congregational Church and perhaps Town Hall. Everyone drives by that monument um, on a pretty regular basis. Uh, one thing you're going to see on that monument is uh, dedicated 1869, 150 years ago. So we thought it very appropriate that we um, have a celebration, rededication of that monument. Uh, but, and, and we're doing this for uh, one main reason. 29 or perhaps 30 or 31 Shrewsbury residents, and Michael will talk about that in a minute, gave their life during the American Civil War from 1861 to 1865. Uh, maybe 29 sounds like a lot. Maybe some people think it is not so much, but we had a population of around 1,500 residents in 1860. Michael, can you tell us what that would mean today? I did some uh, figuring with the numbers as opposed to our population today, that would come out to about 700 people today dying in a war. So we can only imagine the impact that would have on the, the community or the impact they had on the small town of Shrewsbury back then, at that time. Mm -hmm. it, it, to put it in perspective, the global war on terror, I think we've had one yes. Shrewsbury resident one. In, 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 in a 17-year time. One from Korea, one from Vietnam, one from the current era. That's it? That's it. So we've had three post-World War II killed in actions over over a 70-year um, period. That's right. What about World War II? There were about a dozen from, from what I recall, okay. but not all were killed in action or died of wounds. Some were, you know, vehicle accidents sure. or things like that. Even so, that's that's a significant number, but right. not as small as uh, the right. other ones. Well, let me tell you about the actual uh, program. Uh, again, it's going to be on October 26th, which is a Saturday at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. And we're going to open with the color guard from the Assabet Regional High School Junior ROTC program. We have a, a benediction. We have a Pledge of Allegiance uh, led by the Boy Scouts of Troop 114. And then the actual service itself is being run by the Willie Grout Post 25 Sons of the, Human Ve uh, Sons of the Union Veterans. And they have a GAR, Grand Army of the Republic program that's been used since 1917 to uh, um, rededicate the uh, Monument. So it's an actual program. It's an actual program. Um, and then we're going to have remarks uh, by a town historian, which is very appropriate. We're going to have some remarks by uh, uh, Fred Russell, who was the commander of the American Legion Post and the chair of the Shrewsbury Veterans Council. And finally, we have remarks by uh, State Representative Hannah Kane. Um, we're going to have TAPS performed. We're going to have the National Anthem, and an a, uh, interesting fact about that, the National Anthem will be played on the Congregational Church Bell Tower. The organ plays the uh, anthem, and it is you hear the sound all over Shrewsbury Center. So that's really going to be a, a real treat. Uh, and the ceremony will conclude. Uh, be, before the ceremony, uh, Mindy McKenzie has organized uh, coffee and donuts on the common. So uh, please um, uh, take the time to come on out and enjoy it. Uh, uh, we're going to have it. About half hour before? Yeah, I thought 9.30 sounded good. That gives time, people time to congregate. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be parking, obviously, at the Congregational Church yep. as well as the library. And also free parking at Champa Funeral Home. 
Excellent, excellent. Well, there's so there's lots of parking choices, so no excuses for not coming down because of the traffic or the, the parking. And, and there's and no elections, so no standouts. No standouts, and also, if I'm not mistaken, even if it rains, we're, we have backup plans. Yep. So this is a rain or shine event, yep, right, be, John? There'll be plenty of parking, and the ceremony will go on rain or shine. And if it rains, we're planned to go to the library, correct? Yeah, well, we have, if, if it's a bad rain. If it's a bad rain, yes. okay. All right, but we're hardy New Englanders. Yes, <laughs> and we are hardy. And if if these uh, if these young men can can uh, die for their country, we can certainly put up with a little bit of rain. Right. Bring your umbrellas. Absolutely. So, Michael, can you tell us about some of these Shrewsbury residents who? Uh... Well, the first thing I'd like to uh, relate to you is the text of something written in 1910 about the dedication of the monument and so on. This is uh, from a book called Monuments, Tablets, and Other Memorials, Erected in Massachusetts by Alfred S. Rowe. This was written by George Stone, who was a town clerk, and Hiram W. Loring, who was the GAI post commander at the time. In 1869, Thomas E. Tatum of Worcester erected upon the common a marble shaft at an outlay of $4,000 exclusive of foundations. The funds were secured at first through a monumental association organized soon after the war, working through fairs, lectures, etc. The Old Shrewsbury Rifle Company sold its tent equipment at auction in 1866 for $68.50 and donated the sum to the fund. By such means, $1,500 was acquired and the town added $2,500. So that's uh, when the monument was erected. Um, just recently, you mentioned that we found someone that may not, that isn't on the monument, and we don't know why. And I have an excerpt from the diary of Josiah Stone, who was a town clerk, uh, as many of his ancestors and so on were, going up to Alden Stone, who I remember. But he said, uh, Wife Emery, who is his son, and I attended the funeral of Henry Maynard, son of Daniel Maynard of this town, which was at the Congregational Church at 2 p.m. He was out in the army as one of a company of sappers and miners and died January 31st at the hospital in Washington after an illness of about 10 days. Now, this conflicts with Edward A. Andrews, who's supposedly the first one to die from town in the war. We're not sure why he's not on the monument. We have uh, documents that tell us that he was from Shrewsbury. He's buried in Mountain View. His uh, funeral was here. Why he's not on there, we don't know. Uh, Edward A. Andrews was from a prominent family in town that lived at the fork of Route 140 and Prospect Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and when his funeral, uh, a month or so later, came along, the Shrewsbury Brass Band accompanied the family to the cemetery and back. It was uh, quite a, a large congregation there. So we're not quite sure. We're still looking into that, why he's not Conspiracy. on there. Conspiracy. Well, I'm not sure. But what was the name that that's not on there that you uh, just mentioned? Henry Maynard. Maynard. Yep. In the list that I reviewed, uh, of people that are not on there, uh, there's a Chaffee, a Palmenter, and a Smith. So there might be four. Hmm. There were some included. people that were either hired as substitutes or enlisted from wherever, Washington, D.C., uh, to get the bounty because the town was required to provide X number of people to go into the army. So they, they offered a bounty of like $300. If you enlisted from wherever, you got the bounty, even though you weren't from here. Hmm. So that could be a possible. Uh, oh, wow, that's interesting. Might be an explanation, explanation. of that. Yeah, yeah. Could be. yeah, you have to kind of explore that a little more. Mike, but that was also a time when you could pay someone to take your place. Right? We had one in, in Shrewsbury that hired a substitute hmm. for a couple hundred dollars. In other words, a bounty. Um, I don't recall the name at present, but hmm. there was one substitute. Hmm. I had to go. Wow. 
Look, you, know? you, you brought up a good point. Uh, some of these men were sent back to Shrewsbury to be buried. I yes. oh, yes. didn't realize yeah. that. Um, and we mentioned uh, Jonas Wheelock, hmm. who died at Andersonville, the infamous uh, rebel prison. And that took a lot of research because even though there's a, a marker at the cemetery with his name, died at Andersonville and so on, if you look at the burials at Andersonville, there's no one by that name there. So what we discovered was he was underage. He was only 16. Hmm. He ran off to, I believe, Vermont and enlisted in uh, a U.S. regiment, not a, a Massachusetts regiment under an assumed name and went to the Battle of Cold Harbor, was captured, was only at Andersonville two or three weeks and died from you know, disease, mal malnutrition or whatever. But he's buried under the assumed name. There were only two people th that died on that day and one is from somewhere else. So we were able to track that down. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. Fun fact, do you know what the actual word is for 150th, uh, referencing 150th? I think we talked about that. We did. Do you want me to tell you? Sesquicentennial. Sesquicentennial? Sesquicentennial. Yes. So, that was a good Saturday morning conversation. That was a good Saturday, Saturday morning conversation, <laughs> and so there you go. There's your word for the day. Well, I might stumble over it, so I'll say the 150th. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'll stick with that commemoration. <laughs> <Probably> <laughs> Well, I could tell you one thing that Anderson, I have, I won't say had the privilege, but I was, uh, it was very depressing to go to visit Andersonville when I lived in uh, Southern Georgia at the time. It was uh, just very ominous mm -hmm. what they did between dysentery and starvation and feeding them and it was just. So where is that terrible. prison located? Southern Georgia. It's in uh, Southern Georgia. Yeah, Jordan. it's right, okay. it's not quite to the Florida border. It's. It's like in East LA, East Lower Alabama, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's very in Alabama hot. Alabama or Georgia? It's in Georgia. Okay. It's in Georgia, but it's it's towards the Alabama line. Okay. So, I believe. I've been to Gettysburg, which is a national park now, mm -hmm. and um, not recently, but they do a great tour. If anybody has a chance and you haven't been there, I highly recommend uh, you go to Gettysburg in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and uh, you really get a lot of history, uh, uh, you know, about the battle. It's a beautiful area. Yes. Um, about two years ago now, we uh, had the monuments clean, including the Civil War Monument and the Knox, uh, the Henry Knox Monument and the Miniman Monument. Town meeting approved an appropriation and we were able to uh, really clean the Veterans Monuments. They needed it uh, after a lot of years. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael, you may know this. Um, I understand at one time the Civil War Monument was blown over? It fell over during an ice storm, maybe in the 1880s, what I remember. Um, there was a horse trough right at the front of the common where horses could, like a stone horse trough, I guess. And the ice piled up on the monument and it fell over into the horse trough. <laughs> and they had to pay to have it re-erected and put back in place. You can only imagine how much ice that must have been oh. for that big a... And what, yeah. what year was that approximately? I think like the early 1880s, okay. from what I remember. Yeah. Hmm. So it stood, it stood ever since. Yes, yeah, it's still there. Okay. Yeah, I can only imagine how they re-erected it. And I hope horses weren't da uh, impacted. I hope <laughs> it didn't fall and... Not that I know of. Okay. There's a nice storm. I'm sure pe people took better care of their horses I hope than so. they did. I hope so. Okay. We, uh, we had a lot of social groups in Shrewsbury over the years, uh, you know, the Grange and places like that that are no longer active. We probably had a Grand Army of the Republic chapter as well, yes, I we would did. think. Yep. Uh, the Grand Army of the Republic Post 135 um, first met upstairs with a historical society, upper floor of the 1830 okay. Brick School, um, used to meet there. And also uh, Camp of the Sons of Union Veterans afterwards. And that's one of the photos we have here tonight that shows a group of them in front of the monument around the World War I era. 
And the reason we know that, um, the two Mitchell sisters, Helen and Margaret Mitchell, who both worked for many, many years for the town, uh, back in the 80s, I had a copy of the photo, but they identified probably a dozen or so of the people in the photo, including their father, uh, for me. But one of them uh, kind of stands out, and that was uh, Ralph McKenzie, who went into the service in World War, World War I for a short time, but he's standing there. So we know we can kind of gauge the, the year the, the by era, that. The time. Yep. Yeah. Um, Michael, any idea when the last surviving Civil War veteran from Shrewsbury would have died? Uh, 1938. Oh, you 1938. have that right there. Oh, to the first time. Wow. 1938. 1938. He was, he was very old. He wasn't, didn't enlist from Shrewsbury. I believe it was from Maine, but he moved here afterwards. Samuel Allen. He lived on Prospect, I believe, over there, the Allen uh, homestead. Okay. That's amazing. Well, I think, I think just, it's amazing that you put so much work. This is a, a really phenomenal program, John. I just want to take a moment to thank you. No, no, um, because this is going to be a, a really special event between mm -hmm. the uh, the rededication, the speakers, the reenactment, and uh, you know, just thank you so much. Well, for I have a good together. committee awesome. that consists of you, and I, I want I want to thank uh, Michael for being involved in this as well. I urge school teachers, parents that are watching this, maybe to encourage you know some some of your students and. Your, your kids to maybe, you know, take some time out of your Saturday morning and come down and, you know, this is a real piece of Shrewsbury history that yeah. we should, you know, you know, educate our youth about. It's something. it's American history and Shrewsbury yeah, history. So exactly. I, I, I concur with uh, Melanie. Uh, if you have a chance and you have uh, teenagers or younger, try to, try to bring them, try to, you know, let them know what, what happened. This really was a pivotal part of U.S. history. I know. If you think about what ha you know, the, why the Civil War took place, had it gone any other way, I mean, this would be a completely different um, country that we're in now. Yeah. So, absolutely. I think it's also telling too, because right over, just at the, isn't it at the Champa Funeral Home? You have the Underground Railroad. There, you have that. There. Have the, yes. And um, what's the name of the house? The well, the one on the corner prospect in 140. Yeah, the Daniels live the there Daniels now. The Daniels live there now. What is that called? The white one? The, we've got the Jonas Stone, but the, the house... Well, there were a number of names for it. What uh -huh. The one it's currently known as. Yes, yeah, it's the house right between 140 and it's Prospect Street. It's the big house Street. between 140 and Prospect, but part, that's also part of the... Part of the underground. underground Railroad where escaped slaves from the South making their way to Canada would go from house to house in different towns and be hid and uh, that house, and right in the center of Shrewsbury, right in the historic district, mm -hmm. was part of the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Hollowed ground. Yeah. Well, anything else from our committee? Dawn, anything uh, at all? Well, we refer to it as the Civil War Monument. At the time it was erected, uh, there are inscriptions all the way around uh, on each side of the uh, the monument, and one of them indicates that they fell in the war of 1861 to 65. So it wasn't referred to as the Civil War at that time. Mm -hmm. It was the War of 1861 mm -hmm. to 65. I, I found that interesting as I was reviewing mm -hmm. uh, some of the information that we're pulling together for the for the program. Mm -hmm. So how when does anybody know when the, the term Civil War um, was attached to it? Nope. I know in the South, That's sometimes your homework they call it, That's my homework. Okay. sometimes uh, um, in, in, the, in the Deep South, they'll call it uh, the war between the states or the war of northern aggression. But I think we call it the Civil War. I think that's kind of the generally accepted term um, in U.S. history today. Right. Or the War of the Rebellion. War of the Rebellion. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. Um, Melanie, anything you want to add? 
Well, I'm Mindy. Mindy, Mindy well, I meant, I meant, I meant, I meant Mindy. Uh, oops, sorry. I don't either. Sorry. I, sorry. Mindy over here doesn't have anything to add either. So. Okay. No, um, well, I was just thinking about, you know, how it's, uh, this is like the worst possible thing that could, it could ever happen to our country and how many, uh, wasn't it like a quarter of a million people died in the... An awful lot. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of people, especially when you come to a percentage of... Of, uh, the population. of the population and as bad as we have it now you know I just can't imagine what it must have been like to have brother against brother in, in this yeah. type of uh, an aggression so mm -hmm. to your point Melanie I, I do think we need to remember this and and have everybody come together and celebrate the fact that we are one United States now so wow. so again when it, it, uh, Saturday October 26th 10 a.m. come yeah. early for um, refreshments, coffee and donuts. Mm -hmm. We have plenty of, parking. Uh, plenty of parking. Uh, David Champa from Champa Funeral Home has been very generous to offer his parking lot. He's also going to have the sound system uh, for the event. So there'll be plenty of parking at the Congregational Church, the Historic Society, mm -hmm. the Public the library. library, and the Champa Funeral Home. So um, we, we hope you all get a chance to uh, attend the 150th anniversary and rededication of the Shrewsbury Civil War Monument. On behalf of our committee and Michael Printer, our town historian, I want to thank you and uh, hope to see you on October 26th. Thank you.